Humanity has had an incredible kinship with the honeybee, a symbiotic relationship. And now it appears that honeybee, through its venom, has granted us one more gift. Now, in honeybee venom itself, about half it's composed of a substance called melatonin, not to be confused, melatonin. And this melatonin, what we're going to look at in this particular research, is a reference to triple negative breast cancer, the most aggressive forms of breast cancer. And its effects, at least in the lab, are just astounding. Now, keep in mind, too, that melatonin has now been the subject of research in a myriad of cancers. An incredibly wide range. We're going to get to in a second. So even though this study is in reference to triple negative breast cancer, hold on. Wait to see everything else it can have a positive impact in reference to. And in conjunction as well with other cancer treatments such as chemotherapy. But to proceed as follows. Venom from honeybees found to kill aggressive breast cancer cells. Honeybee venom induces cancer cell death in hard to treat triple negative breast cancer with minimal effect on healthy cells. New research finds. We're going to take a little bit of a side trip. I'm going to go to the abstract so you can get a, a, a better idea of the astounding features of melatonin, this component of a honeybee venom. Honeybee venom is available globally and offers cost-effective and easily accessible treatment options in remote or less developed regions. Further research will be required to assess whether venom of some genotypes of bees has more potent or specific anti-cancer activities. Well, it, most of the bees they found out had larger aspects of this melatonin. The only one that did not is bumblebees. So we stick with honeybees, which could be exploited. Beyond breast cancer, tumors overexpressing EGFR include lung, glioblastoma, colorectal cancers, Tumors that can express HER2 include gastric, ovarian, endometrial, bladder, lung, colon, head, neck cancers as well. Overall, quoting, our results can be leveraged to aid the development of new therapeutic modalities for many cancer types associated with frequent drug resistance and poor prognosis. I did that intentionally to give you an idea of the wide spectrum of potential treatment options that honeybee venom can bring to us as a society. But to proceed as follows, quote, we tested honeybee venom on normal breast cancer cells and cells from the clinical subtypes of breast cancer, hormone receptive, positive, HER2 enriched and triple negative breast cancer. Quote, we tested a very small positively charged peptide in the honeybee venom called melatonin. Now we discussed that prior, up to half of honeybee venom consists of melatonin, which we could reproduce synthetically and found that the synthetic product mirrored the majority of the anti-cancer effects of the honeybee venom, according to Dr. Dr. Duffy. We found both honeybee venom and melatonin significantly, selectively, and rapidly reduced viability of triple negative breast cancer and HGR2 enriched breast cancer cells. The venom was extremely potent. A specific concentration of honeybee venom can induce 100% cancer cell death while having minimal effects on normal cells to repeat and to emphasize a specific concentration of honeybee venom can induce 100 percent cancer cell death while having minimal effects on normal cells remember this has to be carried out to human trials in order to validate the information right now we're talking the lab setting but still it is incredibly incredibly promising to proceed forward we found that melatonin can completely destroy cancer cell membranes within 60 minutes. Melatonin and honeybee venom had a, also had another remarkable effect. Within 20 minutes, melatonin was able to substantially reduce the chemical messages of cancer cells that are essential to cancer cell growth and cell division. Incredibly promising. I don't know how this may hold for individuals that may be anaphylactic in reference to honeybee venom, but still, maybe through nanoparticle technology and so on and so forth, which they touched on in the full published study, potential use can also be developed. But to proceed as follows. Dr. Duffy, this is also important too, because this goes in reference to other types of treatments or use in conjunction or parallel with other treatments. Dr. Duffy also tested to see if melatonin could be used with the existing chemotherapy drugs as it forms pores or holes in breast cancer cell membranes, potentially enabling the entry of other treatments into the cancer cell to enhance cell death. To take a little side trip in reference to what triggered the 
interest to researchers back in the 1950s. We go. One of the first reports of the effects of bee venom was published in Nature in 1950, where the venom reduced the growth of tumors in plants. However, Dr. Duffy said it was only in the past two decades that the interest grew substantially in the effects of honeybee venom on different types of cancers, which is just incredible. Something so simple, something so viable, inavailable, yet to have an incredibly, incredibly potent effect with a relatively low cost overall. That's where we need to see additional research go into. Now let's go into the full study once again, now to pull up this information, just to repeat and to reemphasize. The active component of honeybee venom is melatonin, not to be confused with melatonin, comprising half of honeybee venom by dry weight. Basically, both honeybee venom and melatonin have demonstrated antitumoral effects in melanoma, lung cancer, glioblastoma, leukemia, ovarian, cervical, and pancreatic cancer, as well as liver. That is an incredible, incredible gift that nature has basically revealed to us and develops a whole new respect for our friend, the honeybee itself. Again, this has to be carried out to human trials. The primary reason we do some of these videos is so in the future, people can reference them. To the, of course, I'll have, I'll have the DOI citation linked as well as linked to the full published study, which you can see they have some really nice charts and graphs for those researchers interested in looking at the data as a whole, methodologies, processing, you name it, it is there in the full study. Now it is up to us as a society to take this information and to move forward and be grateful for the researchers that actually bring this information to light itself. Again, Ralph Turchiano signing off, DOI citation, links will be there for you. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening once again. Gratitude and look forward to see you all once again in the next seven days. Ralph signing off. Catch you then. Bye.